I want to continue this discussion with my political panel. Roland Martin is here. He is the host and managing editor of Roland Martin Unfiltered. And Susan Del Percio is a Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst. Welcome to you all. Okay, let's keep talking about the House. Um, I want to put this up on the screen for folks. The Cook Political Report just shifted Democratic Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney's New York 17th race from lean Democrat to toss-up. Roland, OK? Even Cook Political Report points out that as head of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, or the DCCC, it would be a disaster for him to divert limited resources to his own race. Uh, what do you think about his prospects? And I know you're actually in Georgia as we have this conversation where uh, some other important races are taking place. Uh, yep, I'm heading to Statesboro, Georgia, for a Warnock event there with the mayor of Statesboro. Look, this race in New York shows you the arrogance of Congressman Baloney, pure and simple. Remember, this was a redrawn district, and more of that district was the district of Congressman Mondaire Jones. Mm -hmm. Maloney chose to run in this district, and so one, and, and so Jones actually had a better shot of really holding the district. He loses in the primary, so Jones is out. Maloney is now a scraping, trying to get by. Uh, and there were a number of Congressional Black Caucus members who were angry at what was taking place there, that how could you be ahead of the DCCC, and then you go into this redrawn redrawn district. Some felt he should have stepped down and resigned as head of the DCCC. And so if he loses, it's an absolute embarrassment to him, but also Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. It is... It is egregious what we're seeing happening, uh, and I've heard from folks that the DCCC is actually quite cash-strapped uh, to the point where they don't have any cash. And, Susan, that brings me to my Republican friends, who at this point seem well-positioned to take the House of Representatives. I mean, if the chairman of the DCCC is in trouble, it, it don't sound good. But there, it's not a foregone conclusion. So what are some factors that could disrupt that Republican win? Well, there are some factors, but we have to point out, Simone, I'm so happy you brought up Sean Patrick Maloney's seat, because that's in New York, which is all under Democrat control. They drew the lines. A court said they were not valid. The re Democrats had a chance to redraw them. They didn't. So it went to a special master. So the Democrats completely blew this one. And it looks like right now, given everything and given what happened in 2021, it is possible that the Republicans can win back the House with just New York flips alone. That That's insane. That is staggering. And that, that is insane. Some of, that is insane. And, and, and frankly, you know, John Matt Maloney, to your point, was actually pushing for more dramatic seats that would have made things even worse for Democrats running in New York. Um, but when you look at the issues facing the public, and I know that we hear it over and over again, but it is the economy. It is the inflation. It is mm -hmm. abortion to a lesser extent. But what the Democrats really need to do is to get their voter turn up out. That's what's making New York state, the blue, blue state. Voter enthusiasm, Susan, is what I, I, would, I would say. We often measure um, the potential for turnout by voter enthusiasm or interest. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about our NBC News poll, right? Because the point that Susan brings up, um, well, let's talk about black voters. And the poll found that black voter interest is at 62 percent. Now, that is eight points below the 70 percent of registered voters who said they had high interest in the election election. Roland, Susan makes a, a good point. Again, I want to point out to people, it is not a foregone conclusion. The House is still very much so in play. But when you hear those numbers, what goes through your mind? Easy. I can tell you what goes through my mind. The sheer arrogance, and I'm about to be very specific, the sheer arrogance of white Democratic consultants. The sheer arrogance. You had that political story where one of them, a uh, Washington Post, where they, one of them was quoted as saying, oh, we should forget states like Ohio. It ticked off Congressman Tim Ryan and just mm -hmm. only go compete where you have college educated voters. Well, you're just writing off uh, a lot of places in the South as well. And so the fundamental problem, they don't, they don't want to compete in those areas. And so, and, I'm, and, I, and I have to keep saying this because that's where the power and the money is. And so these white Democratic consultants do not want to listen to African Americans. They don't want to put the money on the ground. They only want to buy TV ads. And so, and you have to be seeding the ground early. I, I can tell you, my media company, we reached out to the DCCC, DSCC, Democratic Government Association, all of them back in March. 
didn't hear from them. All of a sudden, they want to start running ads in October. Well, you had to build up to it. The polling yeah. data was showing that Biden was soft. They wouldn't listen. And now it's 15 days. It's like, oh, my God, what do we do? Because mm. your arrogance did not put the money on the ground to get your voters to understand the issues. And now you're trying to play catch up and please, oh, come save us. That's their problem They're, If they lose, it's the arrogance of the Democratic consultants. I mean, this is a good point, Roland. I, uh, and hopefully we'll be talking with uh, Jamie Harrison in the coming days before the election about this particular issue. And I know the DNC has given a lot of money, particularly to the party committees and state parties, but how they spend that money matters. Uh, Susan, it's not just the Democrats, okay? Because the Republicans, they got some issues of their own. And I want to play some comments from Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney about the future of the Republican Party beyond 2022, especially if Republicans nominate former President Donald Trump in 2024. Here's what she said to my colleague Chuck Todd on Meet the Press. I think that the um, party has either got to come back from where we are right now, which is a very dangerous and toxic place, or the party will splinter and there will be a new conservative party that rises. And mm -hmm. if Donald Trump is the nominee of the Republican Party, the party will shatter uh, and there will be a conservative party that rises in his place. Susan, do you agree with this? Uh, to some extent, um, let's put it this way, though. The Republicans as a party are in much worse shape than the Democrats. The Democrats may have their, their internal fighting, but the Republicans right now are, are, are arguing without a soul. There's no values. There's nothing forgetting about who to put early money behind. There's no one to put early money behind because the majority of them are election deniers. I do think that basically the party will more likely just burn itself to the ground after election loss after election loss. So by 2028, we will see maybe something rising from those ashes, and it will be a conservative, traditional Republican Party. But it's got to get rid of Trump and all the poison around Trump. Mm. And that includes getting rid Too of late. all the people that... Let me finish, please. That includes getting all the people that Donald Trump who wisely, you may not like it, but he put his people into those Republican state committees early on, like from the day he was elected. So they've got to get out. And you know what? We should hope that it's not too late, Roland, because right now we are a two party system and we need two parties. Even if you don't like what one of them has to say, it still helps. Because otherwise, Democrats are going to start seeing bigger losses like they potentially can see in New York. Having a two-party mm. system, a healthy two-party system, is a very good thing. Now, I agree with Susan, but Roland, you're shaking your late. head. I, I, it, uh, I think that, okay, on late. this point, I, I mean, think it is too late to purge the Trump people from the party. But I do think that the Republican Party has to decide who it is they want to be. You disagree? No, they've already decided. This is the mm. whole deal. We've got to stop acting as if there's a Trump Republican Party and the rest of the party. The Trump Republicans are the Republican Party. That's what you're seeing. They have chosen this path. They chose the path of evil. I said on ABC this week and, and after he won, I said they've allowed evil to consume. They, they invited evil into their home. Now it's consuming them. This is the party. It's no longer factions. This is the Republican Party. And so the path moving forward is going to be exactly what it is. It has metastasized. You're not going to somehow get rid of them. They're getting stronger. They are becoming mm -hmm. more strident. And so what is going to have to happen is you're going to have to have the so-called traditional Republicans decide, are we going to take these folks down like Lincoln Project and others, or are we going to go along with power? And a lot of traditional Republicans, they like the power. Mm. And they're going to go for the well, power. And they're going to ride with Trump to hold the power. I was about to say, Susan, I'm about to say, Susan, a real Republican now. And I think that there are, but she's in a minority. I think that there's a stronger a faction of Susans than we realize. But the question is, will we hear from them? The question is, what happens next? And the answer is, we don't got time to answer those questions today. I got to let y'all go. Susan Del Piercio, Roland Martin. This was so great. My earrings came off. I love it. All right, y'all. Thank you. We will have you back because this is a good conversation.